Before I pursue on the topic of my khutbah today, I wanted to touch base on what my brother Intiaz mentioned about mental health and share a quick thing with you. I've been in touch with one, with one of the brothers about his own son who's been having mental health issues, who ran away from home, he disappeared for some time, and he was asking me to make a dua that Allah would help them to be able to allocate him. And we made a dua together. On last Friday, we met together in a wedding service. We're having a good time. And I said to him, please, let's make sure that we're able to connect with your own son. And we left it right there. And I said to him, I'm willing to go and meet him where he is at because he's living in a shelter. He's living on the street. I said, I'm willing to go and meet with him. But let's make the attempt. Let's do whatever it takes so we can help him be able to go back on track. The sad thing is the following day he called me and I thought he's calling me to inform me about the time we should go to meet his son. He said to me, my son, unfortunately, ended his life by throwing himself in front of the TTC train. That's how serious mental health is. And that's how serious we need to take it. And that's how we need to work all together as a community to defeat the stigma around mental health and be supportive to each other to be able to save as many lives as possible who uh, are lost as a result of mental health. Now, we are in the month of Shaban. And uh, we're almost half away through the month. And we know what's the significance of Shaban. It is the month that comes after Rajab and right before Ramadan. And this is the month that paved the road for Ramadan, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam indicated, بين رجب وشعبان ورمضان يغفل عنه كثيرا من الناس. This is the month that not so many people pay attention to its value. And إن الذين لا يرجون لقاءنا ورضوا بالحياة الدنيا واطمأنوا بها والذين هم عن آياتنا غافلون أولئك مأواهم النار بما كانوا يكسبون. We know what Allah Azza wa have uh, prepared to those who are living in ghafla, neglection. So let us be mindful of this powerful month we're living in and, and let us also be ready to do the things in this month that will prepare us for the month of Ramadan. And I'll be sharing with you one hadith today and I hope that we can come out today from this hadith with resolutions. In this hadith, the Prophet says, The mighty Allah looks at the servant's hearts in the night of mid of Sha'ban. When the moon is full and it is half <coughs> the way in the month, Allah will be looking at the hearts of the servants and will be forgiving whomever he wishes, except for two categories, mushrik wa mushahin. Someone who associates with Allah Azzajal, an entity, or someone who is mushahin, someone who has things in the heart that needs to be clarified. So, Shirk is something that we need to be all aware of. We need to constantly be reminding about ourselves about the dua of the Prophet وسلم, in which he said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika shay'an a'lamu wa astaghfiruka lima la a'lam. Ya Allah, I seek refuge by you to associate any entity with you while I'm aware or unaware. Because None of us is believing in any other entity beside Allah Azza to be worshipped. But many of us would be, might, might be having issues to clarify their intentions and purify their deeds to be solely for the mighty Allah Azza wa And one of the ways that can help us and train us to be from those who have sincerity and ikhlas in their amal is to do secret ibadat between us and the mighty Allah Azrael. And more specifically, nawafil. 
because the fara'id were expected to do in a congregational setting and then offer that وَمَا زَالَ عَبْدِ يَتَقَرَّبَ أُلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبُّهُ we're expected to strive in our connection with Allah Azza wa with nafil, non-obligatory actions of ibadat, until Allah loves us. And there is a very powerful story I would like to quickly share with you to talk about the power of ikhlas, sincerity in the ibadat. In the past, we talked about the Sahabi, which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said about, that yadkhulu alaykum. من هذا الباب رجل من أهل الجنة A man from the people of الجنة will be entering to you and Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-As went to see what's with this Sahabi and he told him at the end of the, the, you know, the three days he, uh, he spent with him there's nothing special I do except when I go to sleep at the end of the day I delete everything from my heart that I have against any person around me and Abdullah said to him, that's exactly what qualified you to be from those who will be entering Al-Jannah. <sighs> Silata ibn Ashyam is one of the righteous who was in the battlefield with a group of people in Kabul. And people were wondering, what's with Sila that his dua is accepted? And one of the companions around him said, I shall watch him closely and see what he does in this trip to qualify him to be from those whose dua is accepted. And he is from those whose uh, a'mal are accepted by people. He has a qubul on the earth. So he said, I monitored him. And in one of the nights after long travel and everybody was exhausted, and when people put themselves into sleep, I kept myself awake to see if he have a slip or not. And then eventually, when he made sure that everyone is asleep, he stood up and he reached away from the crowd where they're sleeping into the bushes and prepared his wadu and engaged in salah between him and Allah Azza wa Jal with khushu'a. And to the point that a lion was roaming by in the area and he thought that this lion would scare him during his salah, but he was so mindful and so khasha in his salah that he was not even aware that there is a lion next to him while he was in his position of sujood. And when he got up from his sujood, he noticed the lion, but it did not affect him. It did not bother him. He continued with his salah until he's done. And when he's finished, he said to the lion, Ya Abal Harith, this is the nickname for lion in Arabic, go for look, go look for another, uh, 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 another prey to, to feed on because I'm not qualified for you. And the lion proceed right away and move away from him. He continued in his salah until he heard the roaster calling, for, the, uh, for the, the breakthrough of the day. And then he finished his salah and immediately went back to the rest of the group and pretend that he was sleeping. And when everybody get up, he pretended that he's just woke up to get himself ready for Salat al-Fajr. And that person approached him and said, I watched you throughout the night. And what she did, and he became so upset that someone was watching him because he wanted this ibadah to be between him and the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal. That is called ikhlas. That is called sincerity in the ibadat. Can we find something like this in our life? Can we do ibadat that only the mighty Allah Azza wa is aware of and we hope that this ibadah would be the ibadah that we hope that will be beneficial for us when we meet the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal. This is number one. Number one, let's be mindful before the midnight of Shaban that we are sincere in our ibadah to Allah Azza wa Jal, that we do have something secret, whether it is Qiyamul Layl, whether it is a sadaqah that you do between you and the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal, no one knows about.
whether it is an action of birr al-walidain or salat al-arham that you make it sincerely for you between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. Illa mushrik aw mushahin. Mushahin is someone who has something in the heart against people around him. And shaitan have given up the fact that he will make the children of Adam to associate with Allah Azza wa Jal an entity, to worship statues. Ya Isa, as the Prophet ﷺ indicated after the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, that, the, that Allah, that shaitan will make you worship statues. خلاص, because you become muwahideen. But he did not give up the fact that he will create animosity between individuals. The most active time shaitan is to create problems among people are in, are or is in the locations where the ajr is so high. And that's why those who go to Hajj and have been on the mountain of Arafah know what I'm talking about. People are unable to tolerate each other in the mountain of Arafah, though they know that this is the day of Maghfirah. But they're easily provoked. They become easily agitated. They become easily able to engage in a fight with others around them or to irritate, to be irritated. The same is to be said nowadays in the month of Shaaban. Shaitan does not want us to perceive the midnight of Shaaban with a pure and clean heart. So let us defeat Shaitan before the midnight of Shaaban. Let's reach out to those whom we have upset or they have become upset to us with no logical, re logical reason. And وَخَيْرُكُمْ الَّذِي يَبْدَأْ بِالسَّلَامِ And the best among you is the one who reaches out first and initiate the salam. Reach out for your spouse. Do not let shaitan, especially during the month of Sha'ban, to destroy your attempt to be from those who will be forgiven before the month of Ramadan. To destroy the chance for you that your scale of deeds for the whole year will be raised to Allah Azza wa Jal, shiny, pure, clean. Because this is what happened in the month of Sha'ban. Your deeds of the whole year will be raised to the mighty Allah Azzajal during the month of Sha'ban. So you want to make sure that your scale of these is raised to Allah Azzajal, filtered from all the things that you don't like to be seen in your scale of deeds, filtered from all the underminings and the, and the problems and the sins and the shortcomings, and presented to Allah Azzajal in a beautiful, shiny manner. Seek the forgiveness of Allah in the night of the mid of Sha'ban. Be from those who would reach out to everyone around them who have been upset with them or who have upset them and reconcile with them before it's too late. Is it worth it? Wallahi, it's worth it. Because Al-Jannah is so precious. فِيهَا مَا لَعَيْنٌ no eyes have ever seen or, or ear have ever heard of or someone have even thought of or wondered in his or her life. In the midnight of Sha'ban, let's be from those who are engaged in too much istighfar and ibadat, private ibadat, not congregational ibadat, to ensure that you will be from those who are qualified for the maghfirah. Because Allah yattali'a. If your boss at work come to visit you at certain time, you ensure that you do the best. You show your boss the best so that your boss will be content and happy, so that your raise will be qualified for you, so that you, your boss will be, will be content with you, and vice versa. If your boss caught you not doing your job well, chances he will be unhappy with you and you might lose your job. So let us be as we are perceiving the midnight of Shaban, as we are living in the month of Shaban, be from those who, who will be doing a lot of siyam, a lot of qiyam, a lot of qira'at al-Qur'an, a lot of sadaqat, so that we will be from those whom Allah Azza will be looking at them in that particular night, and Allah will be forgiving all our sins. Our scale of deeds will be filtered and will become shiny and pure and presentable to Allah Azzawajal in a good manner so that not only our deeds will be accepted, so that also we will be able to perceive Ramadan in a good spirit. So we're able to get the maximum from the month of Ramadan and get the salvation from the hellfire 
and be granted the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest stage of al-Jannah. Wa qul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa alaykum fa astaghfiruhum fa yafawza al-mustaghfirin. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu 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 wa ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إن عبيدك أبناء عبيدك أبناء إمائك نواصين يا رب بيدك ماض يا رب فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاءك نسألك اللهم بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك بأن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا يا رب اللهم اجعله جلاء لهمومنا وأحزاننا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن لنا إخوانا في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها لا حول لهم ولا قوة إلا بك يا رب اللهم طعم جوعاهم اللهم اكسي عراهم اللهم فك أسرى أسراهم اللهم داو جرحاهم ومرضاهم اللهم فرج كرب المكروبين وقد الدين عن المدينين اللهم نسألك برحمتك أن تنصر من وقف لنصرة المسجد الأقصى يا رب العالمين اللهم سخرنا لنصرتهم فإنك على كل شيء قدير يا الله pray to you supplicate you to help us to be from those who will be able to perceive the month of Sha'ban, the midnight of Sha'ban, with a pure and clean heart. Ya Allah, we pray to you, supplicate to you to make us from those who will be able to perceive Ramadan in the best shape and manner, Ya Rabb. Ya Allah, we pray and supplicate to you to elevate the suffering of those who are suffering around the globe, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Those who are hungry, feed them. Those who are naked, clothe them. Those who are in pain, Ya Allah, elevate their pain and suffering. Ya Allah, we ask you to give support to those who have stood up to defend the Masjid Al-Aqsa, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us from those who will be a tool to provide support to the Nusra of your deen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, protect the Masjid Al-Aqsa, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and make us from those who will be able to pray in the Masjid Al-Aqsa in peace and ease and tranquility. فإنك على كل شيء قدير وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة